Hello plant people, Nora the Lekker Queen. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about flushing. Flushing in semi-hydroponics, flushing when you're using Lekker. I bet you've heard this term thrown around quite a lot and you're curious to know what it is and what it is you're supposed to be doing. So I've got a few plants here with me to help demonstrate this whole phenomenon of flushing and why we flush and all the rest of this. So I've got my little Hoya serpents here. It's a lovely little plant. I'm letting that trail and it's living in Lekka. And on the top of that Lekka, you can see this white residue. This white residue here is called efflorescence. So this white substance on top of the Lekka is called efflorescence. And what this is, is mineral deposits within your nutrient solution, within the water that are now precipitating on the surface of the lecker. They're becoming solid on the surface of the lecker. I'll show you another plant. This is my Syngonium panda. Isn't she gorgeous? She's so beautiful and living in lecker as well. And she also has efflorescence on her lecker. There we go. She has these white bits on her lecker and that is the efflorescence. I've got another plant here. This is my Syngonium red spot and again also has, there we go, that right there, those white deposits on the lecker, that is the efflorescence. Efflorescence, oh gosh, it's such a tongue twisty word. And this is just all the soluble bits that were in your water, in your nutrient solution. As the water evaporates from the reservoir, I'll get a reservoir. So as the water evaporates, which will happen with time, all those minerals that were soluble in the water, that were dissolved in the water, start to precipitate on top of that lecker. So if your water has got a lot of mineral deposits, so if the water, for example, if you're using tap water and the water in your area is, you know, has got lots of calcium in it and things like that, you will get a lot more efflorescence than someone who's using distilled water or reverse osmosis water. So basically the message is the purer your water, the less your efflorescence. You won't get nothing. You will still get some because your nutrient solution also does have minerals in it, but it won't be as bad as someone who's got a harder water, who's got water that's got more minerals in it. That's one way of reducing the amount of efflorescence that you've got. The purer your water, the less your efflorescence will be. Now, what can you do to sort out the problem? So the simple solution to this is you literally just rinse your lecker and that is what is called flushing. So what you need to do is just grab your plant, put it under a tap or a spray or the shower or any water and just rinse that through and you will see that efflorescence will actually disappear because that will become Remember all this stuff that's actually on top of the lecker was soluble before. So with that water coming through, it will dissolve. The other good thing about flushing actually is as the plant is growing, you do get some decomposition, you get some dead material and the act of flushing will actually get rid of some of those. So that's a good thing as well. It also just resets the pH in your lecker because as the nutrient solution is being absorbed and is being used up by the water, the pH of that solution actually changes. The pH in that um, reservoir changes. So getting the plant out of the reservoir, rinsing all that through gives you a kind of reset and it, it's, it acts like a reset button. So that's good for your plant. It helps it be in its optimal state and in that way it's actually able to absorb the nutrients the way it should. 
So when are you supposed to flush? So I know some people say flush every week, some people say flush every two weeks, other people flush every month, some people don't even flush at all. So yeah, I believe in flushing, you do need to flush. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's in as much as um, they do say that the efflorescence won't harm your plant. I mean, just think about it. You've got all these minerals that are actually sitting on top of your lecker, sitting within the lecker. It has to be changing the ecosystem within that uh, substrate. It's changing the ecosystem within your nutrient solution. So I don't think your plant is actually able to absorb the minerals the way it should. So, you know, giving it a rinse every few weeks is probably not a bad idea. So I would do that if I were you. So how many times do I flush? How often do I flush? Um, I'm a bit naughty. I have so many plants. It's really difficult for me to actually have a set flushing system. I don't have a set flushing system. And that's only because between the plants, between my job, my life, my kids, it's really hard to have something that I can say, right, Sunday is flush day. Nothing else matters. That can't work. So I generally tend to flush as I go along. You know, so when I when I need to refill a reservoir, I'll look at a plant and think, well, I'm just going to flush you. And I just go and flush it and that's done. And that's sort of how I go until I sort of go I flushed everyone and I start back again. So I don't have a system. I just kind of make it up as I go along. It works for me. But, you know, these particular plants that I've shown you, I've actually had them sitting and not flushed them. So I could actually show you what uh, efflorescence looks like and we could do this whole flushing video. So, I mean, my plants don't normally look this bad. I wouldn't let it get this bad, actually. That's, I don't think that's a good thing, but yeah, that's, that's what I do. So now I'm actually going to show you how I flush. I will take you to the sink and I will show you how I flush my plants. So I'm now at the sink and I've got my plug in there just to make sure that I don't have any lecker dropping into my plumbing. And I'll take my plant out of its reservoir. So that's the reservoir and that's the nutrient solution in there. Just discard that and put that to the side. So what I wanna do is make sure this water is warm, not freezing cold, just warm. So that's my water that's warm and I'll get my plant and I will just put that under there. As you can see, most of that efflorescence is now gone. There are a few balls like that one. That one's still got a little bit on there. You could actually pick up the ball and just give it a little rub as the water is going over it. Like that. And all that's gone off that ball now. So that is now my serpents and the efflorescence is gone. So I'll put that away. and I'll grab the next plant. So that's my red spot and that has a lot of efflorescence. So again, So all that is gone. But one of the things I love about doing this is I actually take the opportunity to clean the leaves as well. So I just wash the leaves and make sure all that is clean. And that's just an, a simple way of preventing pests. So just washing my leaves. And my red spot is all done. I now have my Syngonium Panda. And again, lots of efflorescence there.
So this particular plant has been left without flushing for a pretty long time. So you can see that some of the leka actually has quite deep seeding with the efflorescence. So when you do that light flush, it doesn't come off immediately. So these are the balls that actually be picking up and just rubbing as I am washing the lecker and making sure that comes off. And look, if it absolutely can't come off, I just put the lecker away and just put it until you're sterilizing it and that should be fine. But generally they do come off. So that is my panda, all washed, efflorescence gone, leaves are clean, I put that away. Next I've got my silver lady, I actually didn't show you this one before, but this one is living in my Italian Lecca and it's not as easy to identify the efflorescence in because the Lecca is dark. You can see some of that lecker actually does have efflorescence. So even though the lecker is dark, you can still tell that that is there. So same thing, we'll just rinse that off and it should be fine. And that is all clean. So that is my silver lady living in dark lecker that did have an efflorescence but is now clean and I've cleaned off the leaves as well. I will show you how I deal with a plant that's living on a moss pole, living in lecker and needs a clean. I actually wasn't able to find a plant on a moss pole that has a fluorescence, but I'll use this one as an example. So again, same thing, we're just rinsing that off making sure that the water goes through the lecker at the back and the lecker at the front. And that's all you do. And then, of course, we're washing off the leaves. It might be a bit difficult with plants that have, that are bigger, but you know, maybe you could use the shower for larger plants on moss poles, or you could just take your plant outside. But for this particular plant, it's fine in the sink, and I also take this opportunity to moisten the moss. So just give it a good, good dunk. These are all the plants that I have flushed, and I'll just let them sit here for a few minutes, just to allow that lecker to dry off a bit before I put them back in their reservoir. Because what I don't want is the water coming from here, diluting my nutrient solution when I put new nutrient solution in the reservoir. So I'll have them sit here for about, you know, five, 10 minutes until they're nice and dry. And then I will put them in their reservoir. While we're waiting for the plants to dry off, I've got all the reservoirs here. So this gives you an opportunity to just give them a clean. I mean, if you do this quite regularly, it won't be a hard job at all. So that one is quite clean. I don't need to use anything to actually clean them off because they're relatively clean. But if you haven't been cleaning your reservoirs for some time, you will have a lot of um, lecker deposits in there. So you might need something to help you wash them off. But mine are relatively clean and I mean, this is a dirty one. It's pretty much clean. So these are my clean reservoirs that, are na that I'm now going to let dry off a bit while I wait for my plants to dry. So my plants have been drip drying and they're ready to go. This is my panda here. Look at that lecker. It's as good as new. That is my panda. I've got my Syngonium red spot here. Nice and clean. Those leaves are feeling refreshed. And look at that lecker. Clean. And I've got my little serpents here. And Look at her, 
that lacquer is absolutely clean. And all that I did was just rinse it, rinse it, and that worked. I'll show you my silver lady. That's my little silver lady there. And that lacquer is beautiful. No efflorescence anywhere to be seen. So I've got my nutrient solution in here that I mixed up earlier. So that's my foliage focus that I've got in there. And I am now going to put these plants back in their reservoirs with fresh nutrient solution and I will be feeling, feeling good. And they'll be in theory good to go for at least two weeks. Um, and then after two weeks, I should be cleaning them out again. I probably won't. Um, my plants usually go for at least a month before I flush them and they're still fine. I'm not saying that's the best thing that you should do. If you can flush your plants after two weeks, please do it. But I'm just saying that it's not the end of the world if you don't. So I'll put those plants back in the reservoir. So I'll line up my reservoirs here. So I've been doing this for a while now, so I kind of know how much nutrient solution I need to put in my reservoir. And I've got a little level that I use to sort of determine. So I've got my nutrient solution in there. And just grab my plant and block it in there. And that's happy. Next goes there, little serpents, and I've got my panda. So all these plants have now been flushed and they've got fresh nutrient solution. I will now grab my plant on a moss pole and I'll show you what I do with that. I tend to, if, if I've moistened the moss pole while I've been flushing, I tend to let these ones sit for a lot longer. So maybe about 30 minutes to an hour. And that's because I want the water to drain out of the moss that I moistened. So this one, that I think that's okay because it's a small one. What I will do is then actually put my nutrient solution into the moss. So because this one's a tiny one, I'll just do this just to demonstrate. So that moss pole actually has my nutrient solution going through it and not just water. That's a little thing that I do. Put solution through at the top as well. So that's going in quite nicely because the moss pole is moist and eventually all that nutrient solution will actually end up in my reservoir. So I actually might not need to put any solution in my reservoir because it's all come through there. But I'll just top up a little bit because I didn't put so much. And yeah, that's it. That's what I do with my plants on a moss pole on flush day. So yeah, it's, it's really simple getting your plants nice and clean and flushed and it just gives them a little refresh. It resets your medium, it resets your reservoir and everyone is happy. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Thanks, bye.